Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. And thank you, Governor Evans, and thank you, Governor Lowry, um, for really having the foresight to establish this extraordinary organization that uh, more than 20 years ago. And, and thanks, Tom and Joanna, for the invitation as well to join you here in, uh, in a place that I really, really love. I, I love coming back to the Northwest. You know, the coalition, there's been a lot of uh, comments already about the coalition, but I, I just want to say that it really has become a symbol for the rest of the country in terms of its, its advocacy and its ability to work across lines for outdoor recreation opportunities for kids and families, and it really is a leading voice in wildlife habitat and conservation, um, not just in the Pacific Northwest, uh, but around the country. And I've already talked about your ability to leverage millions of dollars, 600 million, and produce over a billion dollars statewide. So you're doing something right yeah, for this state and for this country. And I wish I could bottle it and sprinkle it around in Washington a little bit because uh, there's not that kind of willingness to work across the aisle in Washington right now. I can attest to that. I've been back there for a while. As the governor mentioned, um, I have spent 35 years in the national park system and I've worked much of that in the Pacific Northwest, uh, also Crater Lake National Park and North Cascades where I served as park biologist and again uh, the icon of the Northwest with Mount Rainier. It's good to see so many great friends here as well, um, people that I have worked with over the decades to achieve conservation and connect everyone to this extraordinary resource we have. I'm here particularly for an event tomorrow because tomorrow, after decades of work, we are starting to take down the Elwha dams. I've per I have personally been involved in that project for over 10 years and Others of you, I'm sure, have been working on it for a lot longer than that. Governor Gregoire proclaimed this Celebrate Elwha River Restoration Week, and tomorrow Secretary Salazar and I will join the governor, Senators Murray and Cantwell, Congressman Dix, tribal leaders and other dignitaries um, to signal the true removal of the Elwha dams, to restore the Elwha River to, a flea, to its free flow. Once the dams are gone, the sediment that is backed up there, it will take about five years for that sediment to, to uh, flush through the system. But that sediment is important as well. It will restore the clam beds and the sandbars and the beaches along the Puget Sound. And for the very first time in, in over 100 years, salmon will be able to swim 70 miles into Olympic National Park, into wilderness lands to spawn. And when they reach their historic levels, which will be in the hundreds of thousands, if you can imagine the Elwha salmon, the, the king salmon, which it, in its historic days uh, got as much as 100 pounds, these extraordinary fish uh, will not only restore um, the community and the tribes, but the ecosystem upon which it depends, for that system has been starved of the returning fish for 100 years. The restoration of the Elwha River system has really been uh, the product of persistence and commitment of dedicated people and organizations like you, all of you, around a common cause. And it is that kind of strength that makes these things happen. And, you know, there is the physical restoration that is happening, but I think restoration goes deeper than that. It gives hope for the future, that we can fix things. Though the dams served their purpose, but it was their time for the Elra River to serve a new purpose, perhaps its original purpose. And it only works when there is the kind of coalition that we have in the 250 plus organizations that are in this room. Conservation, business, recreation, hunting, fishing, farming, local communities, that's the key to the success. This is exactly, you are, executing exactly the core ideas behind America's Great Outdoors that we launched with President Obama uh, last year. 
We went out and we did 50 listening sessions around the country. Uh, I was serving as an incident commander on the uh, Macondo oil spill for three months, and I even left. And let me tell you, if you fly from Mobile, Alabama, to Missoula, Montana, and back, that takes a long time. Um, but we listened to literally thousands of American citizens. Um, we took comments online, got over 100,000 comments. We held 20 sessions with young people, um, specifically uh, eliminating uh, the older voice and letting young people speak for themselves. And what we heard was a great deal of hope. We heard over and over a great deal of optimism um, that people still love the outdoors. They love the opportunity to go out and experience it. If I don't mind, they also love the National Park Service in the system. And they have an expectation that was laid upon us as well, that the federal family of land management and conservation agencies could be a better partner than we have been. At times, we can be extraordinarily bureaucratic, and we do not align our systems and our grants programs and others in a way that communities and conservation groups and states can really accomplish things. And so you have done it essentially on your own. And we heard over and over again where this, I mean, I, I have an extraordinary respect for this coalition, but there are other places that it's happening. In the Blackfoot, in southern Florida, in the Longleaf Pine area and others where hunters, fishermen, conservation business communities are working together for a common sense of of recreation and land preservation. So the goal of America's Great Outdoors is really to help reconnect those that are not participating in that way with this incredible American heritage. And for the feds to be a better partner. And we certainly have begun to make that commitment and we're working together uh, really for the very first time in my uh, memory um, at the staff and at the leadership level to bring in line our wide range of responsibilities and programs to help you leverage and do it at the local level. I suspect that many of you, like me, um, grew up in the outdoors. I loved hunting and fishing and exploring and, and just being there. I left the house early in the morning and sometimes came home uh, when my parents hunted me down. And to this day, like many of you, I'm sure, am professionally and personally restored uh, when you go back into these lands. Just uh, a week or so ago, my son Ben, who's a husky, by the way, um, uh, spent four days in the backcountry of Yellowstone fly fishing. We fished alongside sandhill cranes. We heard wolves howling at night. And we caught some beautiful cutthroats on the flies that I tied, by the way. Um, and on the hike out, we were walking, uh, we were about eight miles in the back country. On the way out, we were coming down a hill, and we heard this incredible rumbling behind us. And a herd of bison, uh, at least a hundred, came charging over the hill right behind us. We were on the trail. We stepped over behind a boulder, and literally they passed on either side like river water around a rock. We could hear their, their breath. You could smell them. I could have stuck up my fingers and run it through their, their fur. And I am incredibly proud that the National Park Service and our other agencies can still provide that kind of amazing wildlife experience. And I think if every American had the opportunity to have that kind of experience, we would be perhaps a little more humble, a little more respectful, and a little more in awe of the natural world, especially our young people. Next Saturday on National Public Lands Day, we're going to be joining uh, Nickelodeon Television on the 8th Annual Worldwide, Worldwide Day of Play um, on the Ellipse, by the way, which is a national park in Washington, D.C. And as you know, uh, so many of our young people are connected uh, or uh, totally dependent upon technology, television, and others. So Nick, Nickelodeon is going to go dark. Um, to get kids away from the TV and go outside. And we are participating in this. That, because we know, you know, when you take a young person into these extraordinary landscapes, something changes. They change.
for the positive. And having that kind of connection to the outdoors, whether it's a, a national or a state park or a local park, a, a fishing hole or a community trail, I believe is not only a great thing to have and a great place to recreate, but I think it's an inalienable right that is articulated in the line of the Declaration of Independence, the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> Last month, uh, well, the National Park Service is going to be 100 years old in 2016, so this August was our 95th. And we rolled out a five-year plan um, to really prepare us for our second century of stewardship and engagement. We have 36 specific actions, and many of them fall perfectly in line with the work that you're doing, some of them specifically to reconnect kids to nature and to history as well, to give them that opportunity for that firsthand experience. But we also know that one experience is not enough. You need to have multiple experiences. And so we are lining up a whole progression of experiences for young people across this country from their first visit to become, to come back as a student, to work as a volunteer, to become an intern, perhaps a career, but certainly an advocate. There's a second thing I want to talk about besides young people, which is extremely important to me. But there is a growing recognition, believe it or not, that the outdoors is good for you. It's good for your health. Now, you sort of intuitively know that, but we have an opportunity to partner with the medical community on this. And the National Park Service is leading the Healthy Parks, Healthy People U.S. initiative, part of an international movement in the conservation world that is really looking to connect the human health benefits with outdoor activity, from obesity to heart disease, cancer to depression, attention deficit disorder to rates of healing. Research is beginning to show that an active life outside can have a positive effect. We are literally having doctors that are partnering with the National Park Service to prescribe the outdoors for patients, giving them directions. <laughs> We call the program, Take a Hike and Call Me in the Morning. <laughs> I think this is a game changer. If, think about the challenges of this country, the money that we spend on health care. And if just a little piece of that was provided for conservation and for recreation and access, it's essentially free now. Um, this uh, program really started in Australia, and they are way ahead of us on this. Um, and literally, uh, the insurance industry in Australia is putting aside 1% of their profits for conservation, access, and recreation because they know it's a great investment in the health of Australian people. And we could do the same here as well. We know that there are economic benefits to outdoor recreation. And in this economy, it's important for all of us to be articulate about the economic benefits of the outdoors. In the National Park Service, we know for every dollar invested in the national park system, we get $4 back into the economy. That's $12 billion uh, that we contribute directly to from visitors spending and local businesses um, in local communities around parks that, that really create jobs. We not, also, not only need, as a community, to be thinking about young audiences, but we also need to be thinking about new audiences. It really was Oprah Winfrey's first camping trip, by the way, in Yosemite. But it didn't take that to point out that the percentage of people of color visiting national parks and the outdoors is nowhere near what it is in the population at large. The demographics of our nation are not only changing, they have changed. And the national parks and our public lands belong to everyone. And we need to make sure that every American has that opportunity, and they know that, and they know they have that opportunity. We want them to know that they are welcome, this is, belongs to them, and they can have an extraordinary experience. And so we are aligning many of our programs towards these common goals, and the, the programs that, that Dan Ogden, Ogden and others have worked on for many years 
um, that are now the responsibility of the National Park Service. The Land and Water Conservation Fund, the Federal Lands to Parks Program, our many grants programs, the Rivers, Trails, and Conservation Assistance Programs are being strategically aligned with our incredible iconic national parks towards this common goal, to work together uh, to reconnect uh, all Americans to um, these extraordinary places. So here in Washington State, there are many, many examples of this work. Our RTCA, Rivers, Trails, Conservation Assistance Program, has partnered with American Whitewater, the University of Washington, and local and state and federal officials to develop a blue way a water trail along the 20 miles of the middle fork of the Snoqualmie River, providing access along one of the region's most popular recreational rivers and making it an even more attractive destination. Discovery Park, right here in Seattle, which I know all of you know about, was the product of our federal lands to parks program. And recently, um, we were able to provide a half a million dollar LWCF grant to acquire an 18-acre um, private land holding to this great resource in the city of Seattle. Land and Water Conservation Fund. You know, this is, a, this is an extraordinary resource for us. It's, I want to remind you, it is not a tax. It's a revenue. It comes from the leasing of Outer Continental Shelf oil and gas. It is intended by law to be a return to the American public for the extraction of this public resource and it generates billions of dollars for the U.S. Treasury, all of which goes in to handle the many challenges we have in our, in our federal budget. But a piece of it is supposed to come back. It's supposed to come back to you um, to, for the purposes of land acquisition and conservation and protection. And only once in its 45 years has it been fully funded at its $900 million. We are asking in fiscal 12, the president has requested for full funding in fiscal 12. And I believe it is incredibly an essential program. Now full funding of anything in this economy is, is gonna be a fight. There's no question about it. But here in the state of Washington, it has leveraged with your work, extraordinary acquisition on the state side of LWCF, over $150 million in grants specifically in the state of Washington. LWCF is an investment in our future because it is, as Ron and others have said, uh, for a thousand years. It's core to our character. It's a core, it's a national responsibility to provide these places. And it is an opportunity to leverage what you're already doing. 48 hours ago, I was in the jungles of Colombia, South America, um, working with the Colombian National Park Director in their many challenges. I was there with the park directors from Kenya and South Africa and, and other parts of the world. We get together periodically, uh, our kind of self-help group, um, to, to tell stories and the challenges um, that each of us are facing. My, one of my favorite stories is the park director from Kenya said, well, you know, I have this village. They build their houses out of grass, and the elephants come out and eat their houses. And I said, I don't have that problem. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to point out that the United States, in the world view, stands for many things. We stand for freedom and democracy and the ability of individuals to achieve their full potential. But we are also a leader in conservation. They look to us around the world to show them how national parks should be managed, how public lands can be managed for, for, the, for the public's future, how to reconnect kids, how to work together across political um, divides. And we should never forget that, that we have a responsibility not only to ourselves and to the American people, but to the world uh, for conservation. There are many, many challenges facing us in the future. But the work that you are doing here in this incredible Northwest um, is an inspiration uh, for the rest of the country, for me, um, and for the world. Thank you very much.